living in the crisis of this earth's history, living in the closing hours of earth's history, darkness will surround us. The situation in the world will become dire. There'll be economic collapse. There will be pandemics that sweep across our world. There will be political disasters. There will be war and famine and pestilence. And if we look at those things, we will be overwhelmed and depressed, but looking beyond what is to what will be, looking beyond what is to he who is. So we do not look at what is, we look at he who is. And Jesus Christ, the divine Son of God, is all powerful. He has overcome the evil one. Our faith grows as we accept Christ's victory as our own. Our faith will grow as we accept the victory of Jesus Christ in his life, in his death, in his resurrection, in our behalf. So we live in that victory. Revelation 12, 10 says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Now remember the text. We've read it, but we're, we're unpacking it. Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. Salvation, strength, the kingdom of our God, the power of his Christ has come. Why? For the accuser of our brethren, that's Satan, who accused them day and night before our God is cast, has been cast out. So Satan defeated, cast out of heaven. Satan was defeated in heaven. He was defeated at the cross. But there is still this battle that wages on earth. There's the battle for your mind. There's the battle for your heart. There's the battle for your soul. It still wages here. Remember what our text said. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16 says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in heavenly places. In this cosmic struggle between good and evil, in earth's final conflict, we are in the midst of a battle. And Satan is not going to give up easy if you're going through a struggle right now. If you're going through a crisis in your life right now. If you're going through a battle right now. If the forces of hell seem to be overwhelming you right now. We are in the middle of a cosmic conflict. But the same Jesus that cast Satan out of heaven. The same Jesus that defeated Satan in his life, in death, and resurrection. That all-powerful Christ, as you reach out to grasp him by faith, as you open your heart to his love and you're washed by his love and grace, Jesus will sustain you. Jesus will deliver you. Jesus will enable you to have the shackles that bind you severed. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. They live not their lives to death. Now, we looked at that phrase, the word of their testimony. We speak out the victory in Christ, whether we feel that victory or not. But what does it mean? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Now, notice it says they overcame him. They were not overcome. They overcame him. Victory is ours. They are not overcome. They overcame. They are not defeated. They are what? Victorious. They are not conquered. They are what? Conquerors. They did not lose the battle. They do what? They win the battle. Now, the word overcome is a very, very fascinated word, fascinating word. It's called nikeo. And uh, that's the Greek word. You know, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek. And uh, the word nikeo means to conquer, to prevail, to triumph, to come through victoriously. So the word overcome in the Greek language is a very strong word. It's not a weak word. It has to do with conquest. It has to do with victory. And when the Bible says they overcame him, that's not, oh, they, 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 they overcame him. It's they overcame him. It's a very strong word that indicates that victory is certain for the one who is in Christ, whose faith is in Christ, the one who has the grace and power of Christ living in their lives. The dragon was enraged with the woman. What's enraged mean? Angry. Who's the dragon? Satan. And he goes to make war. Satan made war in heaven. He's made war down through the centuries. And he will make war with God's last day people. He'll make war with God's remnant church. He went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep 
the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus in the last days of earth's history. God will have a people, a divine movement of destiny, a people that are committed to Christ, a people that are sold out to Christ, a people that love Christ more than anything else. And they, because of their love, will respond obediently and keep his commandments. The question in the great controversy between good and evil is who has our loyalty? Who has your loyalty right now? Are you totally sold out to Christ? Are you on the winning side? Down through the ages, Jesus has never lost a battle with Satan. He's not going to lose the battle in the final conflict. You and I can be on the winning side. Although we might find oppression, persecution, difficulty, challenges, Christ will never leave us. Jesus reaches out to you right now. The book of Revelation invites you to come to the Lamb of God, to let him wash you with his grace to let him fill you with his love, to let him change you by his spirit. He has never lost a battle with the evil one yet. Will you reach out right now as Charles sings, precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on and help me stand through the dark and through the night. Lead me on to the light. Listen as Charles comes to sing. This world is headed for a tremendous crisis, a crisis of epidemic proportions that you and I can hardly realize. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. The institutions that we have once had confidence in will crumble. Before the coming of Jesus, there is only one thing that will get you through and that is trust and confidence in him. 
And not only will we go through a crisis at the time of the end, but many of us are facing crises today. Crises that we ourselves are incapable of handling. Right now, Jesus says to you, my child, I have never lost a battle with Satan yet. I've never lost one conflict with the evil one. And I'm with you. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I am there for you. Will you right now reach out to him? Will you right now open your heart to him? Will you say, Jesus, I am yours. I don't want to play games. Every angel in heaven had to make a choice. In the days of Jesus, men and women had to make a choice. In the Middle Ages, they had to make a choice. And in the last days of Earth's history, every human being will be led to that choice. As we pray right now, would you like to say, Jesus, I am yours, totally, completely, absolutely yours. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the living Christ. Thank you that we are on the winning side. Thank you that you defeated Satan in heaven, that you defeated Satan on earth in the days of Christ. You defeated him in the Middle Ages. You defeated him in every age of earth's history. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the victorious Lord and will be victorious in our lives. We give our lives to you now. Do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, and may we, through Christ and by Christ, because of Christ, be overcomers. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friend. I look forward to seeing you next time as we probe even more deeply these messages, Earth's final conflict, three cosmic messages. You don't want to miss one of these presentations. Next time, we'll go into Revelation, the 14th chapter. And there, we'll begin to look at the theme of Earth's final harvest. Stay with us. Invite friends to watch this series with you. And today, leave with the assurance that your hand is in the hand of the living Christ. <laughs>